everybody, welcome back to Audrey's Garage. For those of you that are coming back, and for those of you uh, guys that are new, guys and gals that are new, uh, check this out. Everybody, check this out. Craftsman 22 inch. Now we got a little backstory on it. Front wheel drive. This is a little older machine. It's not particularly young. Its biggest problem is cables, and we're going to get to that in a little bit, and we'll get to that throughout the video. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Cables now are becoming a problem, guys. Um, We'll talk more about that, but I'm, now I am seeing shortages. Like in terms of uh, one of the cables for this machine is it's not backwatered. Its estimated delivery date is mid August. That, that that's like the almost the end of the season for us, right? And I can't afford to buy a big inventory this year. Um, I can't afford it. Everything's going up. Fortunately, I bought a bunch of stuff last year, knowing I knew that this was going to happen, and that's of course a political thing sociopolitic and uh, that's not really the scope of this channel. I always have to bite my tongue you now and say we have a really nice machine here that and I'll tell you the history in a minute uh, that can be cleaned up and put back into service and sold for a good piece of change because it comes with a bag the bag has got a little rip on it which you guys some of you guys may know I fixed that right I have some really nice nylon um, sewing kit for leather and, and vinyl and bags and it's a very high quality nylon, even maybe a little thicker than what's on this bag. And so I, I can refurbish this entire machine, but without a cable, and there's two cables on here, right? So you've got the cable that drives the transmission, and you got the cable that drives, uh, you know, the engine bell, as they call it, a zone control, or kill, kill and break. Uh, it's one of them is a problem. The One of them is coming to probably be here tomorrow or sometime this weekend, certainly by next week. And we're going to work on this a little bit uh, today, and I'm going to take it as far as I can. But imagine that one cable uh, that I can't get, and its delivery date is middle of August, and here I am, and I'm not even out of June. Uh, towards the end of June, but we're not even out of June. That's a problem. A $10 cable, and by the way, I haven't seen the prices go up on these things yet. Uh, but a $10 cable is going to hold up. Well, I got a lot of these. I, I know quite a number of them in the cables. You're dead in the water. You can't sell from an empty cart. And if your cart is mostly full, but it's missing one thing, you can't sell it. And if you were to sell it, you can't use it, okay? So that means the price that you're going to sell it for, you're selling a broken machine. Be back in a minute, we'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with this motor and a little bit of a history on it. So this machine already got its bath, and as some of you know me, right, I got that area outside uh, where I like to clean things and, and do all that in the boneyard area. And now this time of year, the trees are in full bloom, so it's, it's shaded, and on really hot days or whatever, it's just life is good, right? Because you can take all the stuff and wash it off outside, and you're not bringing all that gross contamination, insects and wildlife back into the shop. Believe me, there's a lot of junk. You don't want that stuff. Keep it outside where it belongs. So my buddy Steven gives, gave me this the other day, and he calls me up, and he's got, guy, I'm cleaning out my shed, you want some of my stuff? And I said, yeah, so he starts telling me a bit about it. He goes, I think you're going to be mad at me. So what do you, what do you mean? I, I always know this, like, this, like, front-loaded. <clears throat> he goes, I bought an electric. He did what? I, bu I bought an electric electric machine. So, I, of course, I, naturally, I said to him, we're not friends anymore. I, I don't ever talk to me again. Click. No, I, I didn't do that. But, you know, you kind of want to, right? No, but he did. He bought a, he's got a small property. Actually, he had a big front lawn and a fairly decent-sized property for where he is. Uh, but, you know, he's put a pool in and a deck in the backyard and some other things going on. And then as he's been, you know, living there for a while now, he's really been making the place beautiful. And So there's not as much yard left. And the quick story is, a bunch of years ago now, right? I forget what he said, maybe 10 years. Um, it broke. The cables broke. It was running fine. He said he roped something or I don't know some contraption whatever He was just trying to get it to continue to go and um, Finally it stopped out on the property the last cable went and it stopped out on the property and so happened to be that uh, there was a uh, uh, Lawn, you know, lawn guys, you know, uh, maintenance, lawn maintenance, landscaping maintenance company was across the street doing their thing He walked over there and he was, you know, can you, you know, help me out? What are you gonna get? The guy made him a great offer, right? 20 bucks, right? Take care of your lawn. Well, that was a long time ago. And you guys may have heard this story before or have, or have had it happen to you. 20 bucks, and that went on for, I don't know, some period of time. But he's like, now, 
he's like, things are getting tight, and it's not $20 anymore. It's quite expensive. It's gotten very expensive. And he's like, I, I, I need a lawnmower. So he bought a nice electric lawn. Again, I forget what it was. I know a lot of you guys are saying, you know, uh, it's like sacrilege, right? It's like, oh, my God, electric. Yeah, it's, you know, at some point, all that stuff will be electric. Uh, and for those properties in that area, we have a little bit more property out here. Years ago, when I first moved out here, it was acreage. And, of course, urban sprawl and everything and people subdividing their properties. And it's a nightmare now. Um, so, but still, for the bigger properties, guys, um, gas is still going to be a thing for a while. And this is a really nice machine. And he did kind of take care of it. Right? He, he's not a lawnmower mechanic. He's a mechanic, but he, he's not interested in fixing his lawnmower. He just wants it to go, and he got the electric, and he brought over a bunch of equipment that just needs a little bit of maintenance and repair, uh, which is not a problem for us in this channel. Problem is, if you can't get the damn parts, right, you're dead in the water. So let's go see what we can do. Let's dig in. That's my diatribe for the beginning. I know it's. I, I'm trying to shorten my my blah 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 babble, but I thought you guys might want to know that story, and uh, so this is now my challenge because I. I really can't afford to buy to stock up on some of these cables. I really don't know what to do. So I bought a spool of the kind of cable wire that goes in here. Um, I think it's a sixteenth or something. I forget. Uh, this the sheath for the drive cable on the transmission is bent or, or broken. So we don't want to use that. Um, I'm not going to put a, a new cable inside of a, a damaged sheath. Let me get to work. Let me see if I can figure this out. But right, I got some numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting it in the description and here as I speak. Um, I'll have it scroll up. And I'll also put some diagrams in too for you guys. So I, I have the, the stock cable and this is considered to be, we, I would consider this to be, there's two versions on these Craftsman's, short and long. Um, and so w what you find is on some of the Craftsman's, the older ones, the longer cable, and I'll give you the dimensions in a minute, meaning longer, meaning that the zone control mechanism over here, right, so this is on the left side of the mower, is over here always on the Briggs engines, but the handle, and I'll give you a zoom of that, the handle where it connects to the handle is on the right side. Now, almost all of the newer ones are doing it where it connects to the handle on the left side. In fact, most of the newer motors, uh, mowers that even with uh, you know belt-driven uh, transmission and also bag assist, okay, on the Craftsman's with bag assist. This is, doesn't have bag assist. I think this is before bag assist. Everything is on the left, and that makes the cable run shorter. Okay, so even some of the older push Craftsman's utilize a long cable. Now I ordered one, and I believe that's the one that I ordered. It, it comes in a two pack, and I think that's what's I'm missing. Um, I'm gonna go check at HIPA, but uh, I don't know if they have it. So I, so let me let me. I got that far with you guys, and I'll show you a, up on the handle too in a little bit. And so the dimension for this is again they call it a zone control or engine bail, right? The sheath is, is uh, 54 to 54 and a half, and the cable part is 61. That's rough, rough plus or minus a little bit. Sheath, meaning this, this plastic and or metal outer casing as measured from the end to the end. And the cable, of course, is full length, right? Z-bend in this case to Z-bend. So this one is a Z-bend to Z-bend, or Z-bend. Right, so that's what that is. Now, that's the longer one. Now there's a shorter one, it's something like 47 by whatever, I forget what it is, but that's not what this uses. And while I'm on that subject, and then for the real cheapy things that you see out there, the MTDs of the world, right, that are out there in Depot and everything, they said, let's just make it even shorter. We'll change the handle design and look at this. Right, this, this is what they make now. Okay, and they, they, they even removed some of the sheath Right, and just gave you a longer cable. And, and I've seen my customers damage this, 
right? They just get it hung up on something. I don't know, a bike or something in the garage or the shed or when they go to unpack it from their car. And I've seen them so many times, they, they go to pull the handle over and they pinch the cable and that's how this one got broken or it gets hung on something or caught up on something, whatever. Think of how much money they save by making it this versus this. And this just, you drill a hole and it just hangs on the end. So it's a really crappy. We saved a lot, right? So let's go back and we go put this one on now. <clears throat> now the pr next problem is the drive control cable. Now I, I may have one Again, this sheath is no good on this one, so I can't do a patch and repair. Uh, this one clips in, it slides in, drops down, and you kind of pull back and it locks in place, and I'll show you that in a little bit. They got away from that, and they went to a, uh, a standard plug. So essentially, a lot of these are just these plug push in with this you know, sort of little keepers that spring out. Uh, this does have a little spring on the end of it, um, they pretty much do that in general. Um, most machines nowadays that I've noticed uh, have a little spring on the end. Let me go see what I have for that. But I want to install this first and get this kind of, you know, ready to, for us to do a little testing or whatever. I'm not going to really go over the whole machine with you guys on this episode. We're just going to try and deal with the cables and then I'll clean it up and I'll show you a few things about it. We'll get it running and I'll get it out of here, right? And get it to a customer. Um, so it's not going to be a complete overhaul or master class series or anything like that. I'll be back in a minute. Now I want to show you outside. So this is the same model basically as what's inside. It's a little bit different. I'm going to show you these two. You can see the, the body is basically the same. There's just a few little differences, but the cable setup is the same. Red handle here, right? It's over on the right hand side and this does work. It needs to be lubricated. And this cable is the same as our cable for the drive. It's also damaged in the same way. It does work, however. So I don't want to touch this. This one is the same, right? This one's a little stickier, but I think it'll clean up. See, and instead of it bolting on, it uses a similar cable over here, which is snap-on. And it's just a little bit different of a machine. It's got a Honda on it, but it is a Craftsman, right? But we don't want to disrupt that, so let me go show you what I'm up to. Now here's a red Craftsman over here. Very similar to what we have. Mikey threw on whatever he had. It's not working. So this one's a complete mess. This is a Paulin, right? Basically the same thing. The cable is damaged. It's on the right-hand side. This one uses a snap-on. This is another Paulin. This one actually seems to work, but it's a little sticky. These use snap-ons. This one, this one's actually Bob Vila's. So teaser, we're gonna be doing a Bob Vila. This one's all messed up. Let's go back inside. All right, so I have a cable. Um, this one is the sheath, and I cut the bad cable out of it. I tried to restore it. Um, it's just got too much rust and it's damaged, so it would just snap and it wouldn't pull smoothly. There's no way to get lubricant all the way in there properly. Uh, it takes a long time to keep wetting it down. So I cut it, I cut it appropriately, and I left myself the good end, which is right here. So we could use that. Right, either now or later. But what I did do is I, I, I took some of my cabling that I bought, I put one of these ends on it, I terminated it, and then I measured it out, including this length here, uh, this little extra length, and I cut it. I left it a little bit long, and we're gonna try to get it into this sheath, and I'll show you what I do next. So I've already blew this sheath out, the compressed air, I put some more lubricant in there, including some oil, and let's see if we can get in there and see how it feels. All right, you see these ends, All right? I showed you a little bit before, but yeah, you just turn that screw in, and then it's the same thing up here. And I left a little bit extra, right, on either side, really, and I just turned it in and made my adjustments, and it's, it's so smooth. Okay, and I'm gonna show you those. Um, so you can Google that, or Amazon Google it, 
The Wire is 16th, right? But I, I, I think I ordered Aircraft, which is a 16th stainless. So it's like permanent. Uh, and then with the lubrication on it, she, the person shouldn't have any issues for it, like ever. It wasn't that expensive. I think that's what it is. Not, you don't want aluminum. It's braided, stranded, one eight thick. You don't want a vinyl coated per se. I don't think that's going to work. It may not fit in the sheath. Uh, but I'll try and look through my records. And I tried a few different things over here. So this is the end I was showing you a cut. Now we can use these clips in the future. So see these clips in here, right? These are stake ons and the wire goes in one end and then the other, it goes in between and it, you crimp it in your vise or with a proper tool. And then that allows you to do a splice, right? So that's another way around it. And what did I just do at the ends here? Now again, the part numbers are useless, but that's what these things look like in the bag. Really nice piece. They're not expensive, really. I mean, it's a, it's a lifesaver for me right now. I can't get this damn cable. This is, and I got a whole bunch of mowers, as I just showed you outside, that have this cable. So, you know, good luck on that. All right, I'm going to go back to work for a little bit, and I'm going to show you this one with a newer cable. Uh, but here is the kink here. Now, I think we could, we could use this sheath. It's not terrible um, in a pinch, but I'm going to not use it on this one because I think this machine's going to come out great. So we're going to have some really good cables on it, and I want to see if I can get top dollar for it when we're done. Let me go to work for a little bit. Let me clean up a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll see you guys a little later, and I'll come back, and before I'm done, we'll fix this part, right, the transmission. I still have to go through this machine, so I want to get to work on that, and I'll be back with more cable stuff, and we'll finish up this part of the video. I'm getting ready to remove the drive cable. Now on this one, it's adjustable. That's what these holes are for. So we see they pulled it out all the way. So I gotta unbolt it here. And there's a spring and a hook on the transmission. It lifts the transmission up. We have to remove it here. It's a Z-bend. So sometimes you can get it this way. You know, hold on, let me grab a pair of pliers. Let's see if I can get it with my left hand. Sometimes we can, because you have a bit of, once it's disconnected up top, sometimes you can get it this way. I don't know if I can do it. But it comes out, man, we don't want to break the transmission. Comes out, let's, let's turn it on its face. We have to shove the cable forward, right? And down here, you'll see it. So we just have to take this cable, and let's see, let me turn the light on. So we're going to take that cable and we're going to shove it forward. Well, let me put it down so maybe I can get the camera on it and get two hands. <clears throat> now, there's a couple of ways to do that. Now, when I part out a machine and I have a cable that's good, in many cases that is the case, right? I, I want to be a little bit more cautious. But I think this one, we could probably just take a, a blunt screwdriver and knock it forward a bit. And you'll see. Let's see if we can get it. One of the directions it, it goes, yeah. Is it, and you'll see what I mean when you we get to that point. There is a tang on it, and I'll show you in the new one. So, yeah. Okay, this one, this one plugs in. See, some of them rock, and others plug in. So you take a screwdriver like this, but I need another. Give me a. Uh, pair of pliers like this, see? See it coming up? That's because it's coming up, but we need to disconnect it as well. And the cable is actually kind of broken, and it's jammed, right? So I can't get the slack I need. But you need to get this, the slack. Oh, there's my daughter. In order, so we may have to cut it, because this is broken. You need that extra slack, see it won't move. It's jammed in the sheath, the actual cable. So we're gonna cut it here, and it'll be right there. That's too bad too, because this sheath is broken, so I can't reuse the sheath. All right, so I'm just gonna reach up in here and give it a cut with the diagonals. All right, now, 
All right, so we got a new cable. I put white grease on both ends, right? So this is the original end. This is the new one. We follow it all the way through. Oh, wait, hold on. This is the end that I cut off. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, notice that this is the type of clip, so it just snaps in. But first, you got to pull this out all the way for the slack. And you'll see what I mean, right? All the way. And we're going to reach up in there and we're going to drop that cable down right through here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to pull, <clears throat> pull out the excess. We're going to drop this right down, right through there, and all the way down. Give yourself plenty of slack. All right. And then before I connect it, so I don't break anything, it might be easy to turn it on its side. And I can show you. Because trying to get it up in the air, it's hard to, to get to all the camera angles. Now we can just very easily take it. Right, and just slip that Z bend up in there. Okay. And just make sure that it's in the right direction. So it looks like the Z bend wants to go this way. Right? Because it won't lay right the other way. So we're going to try to slip it in like that. Notice there's plenty of room up here. So I'll just try to stick it through. I know, it's it's... See? And now it lays proper. Alright, so now we're on this side. And we pull out some of the slack. All right? You see? And now that cable, it's already, we've already, you know, lubricated it. So we're literally just going to press that in. I want to show you. We're just going to press it in. Done. Okay. So it's in place there, and it'll it'll it should fit the rest of the way. And now we're going to come over here, right? And we're going to bolt it in. Now they had it under full tension, but maybe we want to try it another way. Now that's pretty nasty. Uh, we can put a little lube on that. We'll take this out. Hold on. This comes out like that. I'm gonna just put a little lube on it. Just a little bit of white crease. Go that way. Yeah, it's quieter. All right, and then we can hook it on here. And we'll pull it back. And we don't really know, so we're gonna try, uh, we'll try about there. Okay, and it stays in place because I don't want to over tension it. Give it a place to go. I'm just feeling the tension on it. And then we'll tighten that up. And then later when I have it running, all right, I can check to see, you know, is it uh, is that working? No. This is the side here. It's a different. I can check to see if the uh, if it's engaging the drive properly. So you're spinning up the wheels with the engine running, you drop it on the ground, hold the machine back, and the wheels should skid. But if they stop and stall, all right, this whole spring system is not it's tight enough. So we got this guy going. That feels really good. And this guy going. And everything is lubricated. Now let me just turn it upright. The belt feels good. It's returned properly all the way. We've got lubricant. The springs are in nice shape. Let's just exercise it. Yeah, that, that feels good. Let me just feel it. It might be a little tight, but we'll leave it. You know, I might have to go to the first hole. Now, another thing I like to do is I put a little lubricant in there. I pull this back. I get some lubricant in there, lubricant on that side. I'm going to do the transmission as well, and I like to put it on its side and get some lubricant in the back of uh, this bearing here. And I just use motor oil, but chain wax is really good. Uh, but this is part of a training service that I got to do. So I get motor oil in there, I blow things off, and then I follow up with some chain wax. You got to get everything moving again. You, you know, lubricant is lubricant. You know, if you if it's just going to be dry lube, that's a problem. It's just going to have dry lube, and then ultimately it'll be dry, and there'll be no lube in it. So dry lube. 
Not all of them work very well. The graphite is too thin for stuff like this. Try a molly lube. Uh, silicones are no good. I think the chain wax is probably the best thing. And I just make sure everything is lubricated. So we're all good to go there. Perfect, 3,000 RPM, she don't smoke, she don't make weird noises. I mean, it was his machine, so he said it ran good. What do you guys think, right? It looks good, everything is good, um, everything works, but the cables uh, are just mint right now. They're perfect, everything feels good, uh, everything seems good. I, I, it might be a little tight up there. I'll think about it, it's getting late and I'm tired, and so I'll do the bag tomorrow. I'll think about if Maybe tomorrow I'll try adjustment a different way uh, and see and make a decision then, okay? So that's up to you guys um, on a system like that. Many of them are not adjustable, and so when the cables start to stretch, right, you've got no adjustment. Now, sometimes I put different cables on and I drill the handle and I do all that. That's, that's not the scope on this video. I have another video, guys. Um, I forgot the name of it. I just, I have, I'm running around trying to finish up. I will leave a description, in the description I'll leave a link to it, and it. the title is, and you know what, hold on, wait, I'll be right there. I'm gonna go get the title, and this way I can tell you guys the title, because this video is about um, what happens when your lawnmower won't start, and it could be cable related, all right? So I'll be right there, hold on. All right, crash when the lawnmower won't start, this could be a problem, right? And then there's more to it, and I just forgot again. I, I'm exhausted, all right? But it's cable-related issue, so I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of diagnostics and to try to figure out when your lawnmower doesn't start. And in fact, actually, a fellow just actually commented on that a little earlier, and, and what had happened was his cable stretched a little bit, and he said he, he fooled around with a tie wrap or whatever, put a little more tension on it, and that, that allowed him to you know, run his engine now and, and shut it off and do what he needs to do and, and if he has a problem again, he can get a new cable. So you want to check out that video. Um, and in that video, I'm going to show you a little bit more about, which I didn't show you in this video, a little bit more about the switch that's in here, right? Now they're different than Hondas. And I have a video that uh, I think is coming out about a Honda, you know, nice, uh, nice newer machine and showing you the switches in there. But on these Briggs, um, they can get bent you can hit something and it can whack it out just enough so where it either won't shut off or it won't start because if you when you pull that bail back it's got to pull this whole mechanism back out of the way there's a little blade connector uh, and it shorts out against a piece of steel right which is part of the whole body and everything of that mechanism it's insulated but then when you pull the bail back, right, uh, and let go of it rather, it, everything slides forward and that thing shorts and it, it shuts the machine off. So when you pull the bail back, if you're not pulling that whole mechanism all the way, uh, she'll never start because the switch is still made. It might, it could just be hanging on by a thread and that's enough of a, of a connection and a short to, you know, stop you from being able to start your, en or your engine. So by using these types of ends, right, these Z-bend ends, Z-bend ends, you got some adjustment there, right? And if you leave a little bit of extra, if you buy a spool of cable, um, and you leave a little bit of extra and you do what I did, you should be able to dial it in and get it just the way you want it. And I'll tell you, adding a little bit of oil in the sheath and uh, a little bit of white grease, it's just so smooth. I hate it when it doesn't feel right. I'll see you guys on the next one. This is a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully this is helpful. I will do more, because as you saw, I've got others that have cable issues. Um, you know, this, the development of, being, of having shortage of parts and everything, this is going to go on for a while, and it's a bit hit or miss. This is an older machine. It uses a different setup. Um, maybe you won't have this problem. Uh, but these are really good machines. So just like the ones that are outside, they're all quite restorable and, and repairable. And these were expensive machines. And so if you want to get something equivalent today, you're probably four, five, six hundred $600. Easy. See you guys in the next one.